What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. Before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and the player ratings and potentials of players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. Obviously you don't have to follow all the tips. This is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you can sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those who are out there who are new to the game and need a little bit of advice or for those you're out there, just want a few recommendations on what players you could sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year. And in today's episode of you to sign for, guys, what a fantastic team to do. A career mode wheel. We're going to go to the north of Spain, to the Basque region for this team and take over Real Sociedad. And these guys are an amazing, amazing team for a La Liga career mode. And there are many reasons why, and let me tell you. Now, in the first season, it's quite a challenge because your budget isn't very big. You're around 19 to 19 and a half mil after wage budget alteration. And as we know, in modern football, that doesn't get you very far. But the objectives are pretty difficult. Finishing the top four, definitely doable. And reach the quarterfinal of the cup, definitely doable. But to win the Europa League as well. Now, that is really, really tough uh, because obviously uh, Sociedad have never won a major European honour. It's a four-star our team though and what I really like about Sociedad's team is that it's got a lot of quality in it yeah it is a four and a half star team it's not that far away from being a fast star team but it's got a great deal of first team quality and it's got some really great young players as well. You've got lovely kits with the blue and white stripes. And of course, the Reali Stadium is in the game as well. Renovated at high cost a few years ago. It looks brilliant, especially from the outside as well. Um, so as I run you through Sociedad's team here, once again, it's a four and a half star team. It's, it's really good. The budget's quite small to begin with. And again, the objectives aren't reasonably tough. But as I run you through it here, what you'll notice is that the best thing I can say about this club is that... Outside of David Silva, the very best players in this team are also quite young as well. So you got the likes of Mikel Ayazabal, who, as we know, is one of the best youngish wingers in the game at 85 overall and can get better and get to around 90 overall. You've got Alex Romero between the sticks, who's superb and can become Spain's number one in a few years' time. You've also got Mikel Marino through the middle of the park in the low to mid 80s and can grow a few ratings too. It's, it's a really good team of good quality players and also quite a few young players as well with high potential too. It's a really, really solid team to take over and start with because even the players that are like, you know, 23, 24 years old, most of them are the mid to high 70s with plus 80 potential. So you've got a really strong core of players here you can develop for now and also for the future as well. But in terms of players to sell, you want to see my transfer list out. I'd firstly sell this guy, John Garidi. He's the youngest of my four players on a transfer list, but He's got a reasonably low starting overall. He's in the mid twenties. I personally, sorry, mid twenties for age, I should say, and a reasonably low starting overall. I'd sell in the very first season. You don't need him. You've got some good CMT. You don't need him. I'll get whatever you can from get a size on the book. We've got around four million pounds. I'd also sell Zal Dua as well. You got a, uh, a younger right back here with higher potential. This guy's twenty nine years old, seventy seven overall, very solid, but. Going forward, he won't offer you too much if you're doing an RTG with Sociedad, as you will be. You can get around 10 to 10 and a half million for him. That's what you got from Sporting Lisbon for the 77 rated right back. And you would have seen one of the interesting names on the transfer list. And you might be thinking, seriously, Doxy boy, you're going to sell him? Well, yes, I am indeed. Well, we'll start off with this guy, uh, Ila Remendi of uh, Real Sociedad, of course. Now, all about this guy is uh, infamous move to Real Madrid, if you will, quite a few years ago now. Never worked out the way he would been hoping but now with Real Sociedad he's a solid midfielder at 79 rated but again at 31 years old yeah you can you can definitely get much younger than this guy and that's going to be the key with Sociedad bringing in much younger players obviously came through the academy at Real Sociedad before moving on to Real Madrid but I would sell in the first season now at 31 years old he's only going to get worse and while he's good enough to be a starter in this team I would look for a younger player you've got Rafinha in on loan that can do just as good of a job and yes I'd sell this guy as well yeah I was working way up to this one David Silva Manchester City icon it'll be tough to do it because he's one of the best players in the team but the key is the age of this guy he's 35 years old and as we know in FIFA Korean when a player turns around 33 34 they are going to plummet in terms of their ability in season one he's valued at 15 mil you can get a few mil over that we've got 21.5 mil for former Real Sociedad bit, uh, uh, manager David Moyes 
and uh, we sold him to the London Stadium in the end. But once again, he's 84 rated and he'll be a star playmaker in this team. But because of his age, you've got to consider that. In the first season, David Silva, come the end of it, will be around 80, possibly even 79 overall. He's going to plummet around 3 to 5 rating, somewhere around that. So in the very first season, as we sell the right back to Sporting Lisbon, and Ila Remendi did go to Spurs as well, raised over 10 million for the pair of them there, each I should say. Silva is going to decline very quickly. So in the first season, I wouldn't recommend keeping him. Whilst he's good enough to be a starter, absolutely no doubt about it. Come the end of season one, he'll, he'll still be good, but a shadow of his former self, if you will. So in the very first season, I would sell. We've got 21.5 mil from West Ham. Real Madrid would not match the bin in the end, as you'll see. We sold him to David Moyes. In terms of new signs of Real Sociedad, now this is quite interesting. I was listening to a podcast with David Moyes um, quite a few months ago now. It was on the High Performance Podcast, uh, hosted by Jake Humphrey, the BT Sports presenter. I mentioned before, I, I, I love the podcast, my favourite podcast, actually. And I listened to David Moyes' episode where he talked about his stint in Real Sociedad. And he, uh, he, t he said something which I didn't actually realise. And for someone who's been watching football for over 20 years, it's quite embarrassing. But Real Sociedad have a policy where I think he said two-thirds or three-quarters of the team around that percentage need to be made up of players in the local area, in the Basque region. Now, it's unlike Athletic Bill Bowes policy. Sorry, I should say, it's, it's not too dissimilar to Athletic Bill Bowes policy, where every player they sign and play must be from the Basque region. Real Sociedad is very, very similar. They're clearly very, very passionate and, uh, you know, very patriotic, I suppose, about their own region, if you will, in, uh, in the Basque region. And Sociedad themselves have a policy where, as Moyes was talking about it on the podcast, you need to have two-thirds or three-quarters of your squad being from the Basque region. That's incredibly difficult to do. Thankfully in the game, you don't need to do that. So if you're playing for realism, you might want to keep that same sort of strategy and look for Basque players, if you will. If not, then you can just go for whatever players you want. So we look for Spanish players, though, um, in this save here. And uh, I wanted to get this guy in to replace David Silva. And I would make him your number one target as well. Danny Olmo of RB Leipzig, who will cost you an absolute arm and a leg. But after selling David Silva, after selling it a Remendi, you'll have a hole through the middle, and especially in the playmaker role. Danny Olmo should be your primary and possibly sole target to replace David Silva. Let me tell you why. He is two ratings lower than David Silva, yes. But he's over a decade younger than the former Man City attacking midfielder. He's 12 years younger than David Silva. So whilst we had to spend over 60 million to get him, this guy is an absolute baller. Four-star, four-star. And I love the high defensive work rate as well. So he works hard out of possession as well. He's got some really solid technical stats. Might not be the quickest, but technically, he's brilliant with the ball at his feet. And again, whilst he's two ratings lower than Silver to begin with, what you've got to remember is this. In the first season, Silver's going to drop around four or five ratings to around 80 overall. Danny Olmo is going to grow three or four ratings to around 85 to 86 overall. He's got 87 as his uh, official potential. With dynamic potential, he can get into the high 80s, 88, 89, pushing 90. He is your successor for David Silva. And I will get the ball rolling in the very first season with Sociedad. They've got some fantastic young talent here. I would add to it. Sell those older players like Ila Remendi, like David Silva, and look for those younger replacements. We did that. For Silva, we bought in Danny Olmo. And for Ila Remendi, we signed Antonio Blanco, the Real Madrid midfielder you can get for under the valuation. We got him for 3.1 mil. Yes, he's 71 rated. Yes, he's eight ratings lower than Ila Remendi. But don't forget, in the very first season, Ila Remendi will drop two or three ratings. Blanco's probably going to grow two or three ratings, so they'll start to meet in the middle around season two or halfway through season two. So, yeah, it's, again, a solid squad. Lots of really quality players here. And, you know, if, if you want to compete on multiple fronts, having squad depth can, of course, be important. But for me, with Real Sociedad, because of the good young talent they've got here already... I would continue that trend. I would sell those players that are in their 30s or approaching 30, like we do with the likes of Ida Remendi and David Silva, for example, and look for those younger talents. Those younger talents might be worse than those players to begin with. You would have seen there, Blanco, eight ratings lower than Ida Remendi. But what's going to happen midway through season two, season three? It's going to be better. What's going to happen with Danny Olmo and David Silva midway through season one? 
it's going to be better than David Silva. So again, if you are doing an RTG with Sostakos, that's what it's going to be. You're not going to win, uh, you know, the Champions League, the league, uh, La Liga, and, uh, and the Copa del Rey in season one. Call it a jo call it a day after one season and finish there. It's going to be like a three to five say season save. So you've got to replace those aging players, get as much money as you can for them right now, and build for the future. In the case of our right back, for example, Arnal Martinez, we signed from Girona. He's, he's seven seven ratings low than who we sold to Sporting Lisbon. But again, he's nine years younger, so he's going to get much, much better in the future. And that is going to be the key with Real Sociedad. If it was a one and done type of career mode save where you win everything in season one and say, yep, cool, that was fun. Now let's do something different. By all means, keep your David Silvers, keep your Ilira Mendes, and just try and sign one class, you know, first eleven or bench player. But because it's an RTG, you got to build for the future and think about it long term. Sociedad have never won a European honour. If you're going to do that, it's going to take you two or three years at the absolute minimum. So don't think about season one. Think about season two and season three in particular. So... Yeah, we sold, uh, signed Blanco, we signed Arnal Martinez, uh, we signed Perez Jones, a young goalkeeper from Mallorca as well. He'll eventually become your backup, replacing uh, the Australian Matty Ryan. And after the season ticket money came in, we ran around five and a half million pounds to bring in a couple more young Spanish talents. And if we are talking about Basque talents with... Uh, Real Sociedad. Well, why not poach one from your Basque rivals, Athletic Bilbao? Yes, Nico Williams, uh, one of the best young Spanish wingers in the game. Obviously, Oyarzabal is always going to be starting on the left-hand side. In the future, though, you'll want someone to replace Arnan Yanazai. In the first season, I wouldn't recommend selling the Belgian. I would give him a new contract like we did, because at 81 overall, in his mid-20s, he's still got several years to go before he starts to show signs of decline. But someone that can replace the former Manchester United winger in the future is this guy right here. Nico Williams of Marcelino's Athletic Bilbao starts off 71 overall. Yes, to begin with, he's probably only good enough to be on your bench at best, but he's absolutely rapid, this teenage kid, with mid 80 potential. And in the future, you can have all Yars as an inside forward on the right, cutting in to shoot on the left, and Nico Williams on the left to cut in and shoot on the right. Those two will be your inside forwards in around three or four years' time. And Nico grows really quickly in FIFA career as well. Why is that? Very simple. Well, physically, he's absolutely rapid. His pace is almost max out to begin with all you need to do is get his technicals up his technicals aren't the best to begin with right now physically is where it's at with nico williams but if you improve the technicals it won't take too long you'll see some really quick growth and not before long he'll either be coming off the bench regularly in this team or as a starter with voyage about on the other flank and the final signing i made was this guy right here now this is quite interesting and i want to talk about this very briefly i do hope in future versions of fifa that when there are b teams in the game like they are here with real sociedad you can transfer players between the teams on free transfers. You shouldn't have to pay money to buy your own player, should you? Robert Navarro plays for Real Sociedad's reserve team. In real life, if Sociedad wanted to use him in the first team, they'd just say, right, let's bring him to the senior lads, you know, and he takes a small bus journey, you know, but in the game, you got to buy your own player. It's kind of frustrating, but I would recommend him for the future and not let him go elsewhere. Robert Navarro is a 19-year-old playmaker at Real Sociedad B. You can get him for a round evaluation. He's 68 overall. We literally did scrape the barrel to be able to afford this guy in the end, which we shouldn't have had to do. Again, I hope in future versions of FIFA, you can just transfer players, you know, to and from the B team for free give some young players to your B team to develop in the lower league and then take some younger players to your senior team once you think they're good enough to play a role in the first team like Robert Navarro would be 68 overall 19 years old but he's got 81 potential solid young playmaker and again whilst Danny Olmo will start he's there for the future to provide cover for the former Leipzig man so in the old Sociedad once again the key was selling those old players Silver 35 in a remainder 31 and Zaldua 29 yes we sold a player in his mid-20s but for the most part, the players we sold were the aging players, but the young Spanish talent coming in was in abundance. Blanco, Perez Jones, um, obviously, uh, you know, the, the star, Danny Olmo is only 23 years old, Arnal Martinez too. And if you look at the first team here, it's basically the same as the one we inherited, only we've now got Danny Olmo instead of David Silva. It looks like we've taken a step back, but for an RTG, sometimes it's the right thing to do. Take one step back for two steps forward. That's exactly what we did with the younger, higher potential players coming in to replace those aging players who had little what you call future here with Sociedad. So as per usual, we're simulating the end of the season, see if we do tough objectives in season one. And as you can see, well, this was very interesting indeed. Now I knew that we had definitely failed 
our cup and European objectives. You'll see there was no final in Europa League like the board wanted. But in La Liga, I was feeling very confident indeed. And that's why. Oh my goodness gracious me. I did not expect that. Now, Sociedad definitely should be knocking on the door for a top four place. You know that Atletico, Barca and Real are normally going to be in there. One might miss out, like in this case it was Barcelona. So ordinarily, there's going to be one, if not then two spots available. But I did not expect this. I was thinking third or fourth in season one. In the end, we won the whole thing. Yep, 26 wins, the fewest amount of defeats, only three losses all season long, and six points clear of Atletico Madrid and Athletic Bilbao. Real finished fourth and Barca finished fifth, and Real Sociedad won the title in season one. Now, in my book, in season one, if you just qualify with the Champions League, your job's done. You've done what you needed to do, and you've had major success. But instead, we went all the way to win the bloody thing. I could not believe that. I was absolutely buzzing. However, as you would see here, with the cup and also the European objectives too, we were knocked out in the last 16 by the eventual winners, Diego Simeone's Athletic of Madrid. And in the Europa League, I knew we'd made it through the group. We topped it in the end, finishing in pole position. But we were knocked out by VfL Wolfsburg in the last 16. Tough European tie there. And it's the good German side, as you'll see Benfica went all the way to win it in the end. So... We did fail our cup and European objectives, but it's not a bad trade-off, is it? Yeah, you could call it embarrassment in the cup and embarrassment in the Europa League if you want. But the league winning the title, absolutely amazing. And again, this Sociedad team is more than good enough to be a top four team. Yes, you've got Atletico, Barca and Real ordinarily taking three, if not at least two of the spots there. It's very unlikely that three or even all four and all miss out. I've never seen that before, but there's always going to be one or two spots available. And Sociedad, I would say, are one of the best teams to claim that spot. Obviously, you've got Unai Emery's Villarreal, fantastic side. You saw Bill Bauer get into the top four in this save. You've got the likes of Valencia as well, but this Sociedad team is a four and a half star team. And don't forget, because of the youngsters in the side as well, the majority of the side is going to grow really nicely in the first season. You'll see our back four, you saw it there. You know, Gorosabel grew three ratings to 80 overall. Leno Man grew a rating. Zubeldia grew two, I think it was. Marino went up a couple as well. You know, this team gets even better than its starting overall, if you will. And the reason being is very simple. Look at the age. And again, case in point with Danny Olmo here as well. Yeah, we sold David Silva to West Ham and bought in Olmo. We signed a player that was two ratings lower. But look what happens in season one. He grows three ratings to 80. 85 overall. David Silva would have gone down three or five ratings. So Olmo is now a far better playmaker in just one season. Or Yarsbao is up to 87 overall now. Marino's 86. When well, you've got star players here that are young enough to get better for the future as well. Isaac, for example, now 84 overall. Yeah, there's no reason Sociedad can't be a Champions League team. That should be your aim in season one. Bring Europe's big time to the Reale Arena. And if you can win the league title like we did, well, that's an absolute miracle. It's really lucky, but we'll take it. Great team to use, though. Great real kits. Fabulous real stadium and a great RTG as well with a great base core of young talent. Definitely give them a guy a go, guys. Great side for a La Liga RTG. But that will end today's episode of the Sign for guys. Big thank you for watching. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you have, please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I will see you for the next episode of Who to Sign for. Hopefully, I'll get just as lucky very soon.